Who's not? It's hot. Where's the fist bump? You were mixing it up. I feel like I just should've... when you had it all figured I out. Just had it all figured out. Curveball, because it... it's baseball season. So everything's about sports, isn't it? Yeah, it's baseball season because it the Celtics went down. So. <laughs> um, who are they gonna pick? Um, that guy Foltz from Washington, who no one has ever seen play because he played on a horrible team, but he's really awesome. So what's your he played, on, what's he played your on a horrible team, and he played out in the West Coast in Washington. So he's playing at like two our time, two o'clock in the morning. So. But what have you heard about him? Is he going to be a good addition to the Celtics? Yes, yes, yep, generational player. He'll be great. Yep. Okay, so things I don't are, know how they're going to play him and Isaiah, but we'll see. Well, but things are looking good for next year. They weren't expected to even do this well this year. They did so much better than they were expected to do. So cheers to the Celtics. Great season. No disappointment. Yeah, you know, everyone rallied behind them, but was, you know, there were some ups and downs there, but, you More know. ups than downs. Yeah, no, good for the Celtics. So, I know you didn't put them on the hot list. You've got other folks of the sports variety on there, but let's go through who is hot. Let's do it. Senate President Dominic Ruggiero. Yes, he um, put us out of our misery of having to hear about the Pawtucket Red Sox proposal, at least for this legislative session. He said it's dead. There's not enough time to vet the deal. So, I say three cheers to uh, Senate President Ruggiero because... We did not have the time to look into a uh, massive giveaway to wealthy out-of-state millionaires. We didn't have the time to, to review it. Now, I wouldn't have needed much time, personally. <laughs> I would have needed about 15 seconds, and I would have got my shredder out and stuck the thing right in the shredder and said, take a hike. Don't let us hold you back from prosperity, guys. You guys know what you're doing. Now, were you surprised? I mean, so much played out this week. Monday after Commerce, this is what we'll talk about later, the governor yeah. said, good deal, good deal for taxpayers. Tuesday, Ugh. Senate President Ruggiero says... No time. No time. And then Wednesday afternoon, you know, Doug Rebian up there trying to make the case for it. Yeah, sure. I, we're going to talk about Doug Rebian in the... Um, in the hot list. Yeah, on the hot list in a few minutes. But yeah, it was quite a tumultuous week. But uh, the good news is we're not on the hook yet to, uh, to pay the money to build a new stadium. So that's good. I mean... That's good. We'll so stay tuned. There's going to be an interesting piece on the Paw Sox and Gold oh, Bubble tomorrow. Oh, I'm sure there will be. If I know you. <laughs> if you know us, there'll if be I something interesting to look at on the weekend. So you had uh, Senate President Ruggiero as hot. If the car mod with TF Green. Yeah, they landed Frontier Airlines. So he's, you know, it seems like, as I said in, in the column, it seems like we're getting all the economic development out of the airport corporation because uh, first they landed the um, uh, Norwegian Airlines. Now mm -hmm. they're landing Frontier Airlines. So... Yeah, we'll give them credit for that. It's economic development. It's flights to Denver and Orlando. So that's thirty nine dollars each way. I mean, come on, I can't get an Uber cab to you know <laughs> three streets or I can't get a, a yellow cab for that price for to go to Warwick for crying out loud. Molly and I are like, we're gonna go down, we're just gonna go to Florida, we're gonna do live mm -hmm. from there. I don't know if John, in January. I don't know if Josh is on board, but th this is yeah, Molly and I. But, but don't do it. <laughs> don't do that in January. Don't do that now. It's too huge. You guys will be sweating. So. That's that's our plan. So yeah. Iftikhar Ahmad, the CEO and chairman, great and he, job. He was one of the 17 to watch for uh, for Go Local in 2017. I'm watching. <laughs> how, pro how prophetic were we? Very prophetic. <laughs> well, we knew. I mean, he was just such a rock star in the airport industry to come to Rhode Island. Obviously, big things were expected with him. And, you know, came with a big price tag. Um, you know, it was one of those, if he can do it, pay him the bucks. And hmm. so far, we're seeing the fruits we're of the labor. We, so. so far, we're getting what we paid for. He so was, far. He was in studio yesterday. And I, he I was. I they asked him. I asked him if he was a policy walk. And he said... I'm kind of a worker bee. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We like worker bees. You know, we do. They make things happen. He's clearly up there. We hustling. have a lot of people in Rhode Island who are policy wants, but they don't work. <laughs> they don't like to work. So they fit in well here. But we like worker bees. So I'm, that was a good good comment by him. So we, hot. Yes. Uh, Iftikhar Ahmad is hot. Hot. Someone else who was in studio this week, Yanin Castedo, the Rhode Island Absolutely. Young Democrats organizer of the Absolutely. Year. She's from Central Falls. She's energetic. She's bright eyed. She's bushy tailed. She wants to make things happen. Uh, organizer of the year for the Democrats, and she wants to run for office. She's so, 17 years old. 17. I love seeing young people that want to get involved, but I want them to get involved for the right reasons, and it seems like that's why she's getting involved. She looks like she wants to get into public service to serve the public, so that's great. So I think We have had a few people in Rhode Island who <laughs> use public office to serve themselves <laughs> and not so much their constituents. I'm not going to name any names, of course, but it's you good are... to see young people who want to do the right thing, so I made her on the hot list. You are on a roll today. I'm expecting, we're going to hear a lot more out of Yanine Castedo, so it was yes. good to have her yep. here. She's clearly 17. I'm like, how are we only 17? Right. And she's going to be 18 by 2018, so as she said, you know, thinking of running for office. So Yanine Castedo on the hot list. So let's keep going down here. Let's see who else is hot. Rep. John Lombardi, Night Court. Yeah, Night Court. Um, when Representative Lombardi or Mayor Lombardi or Councilman Lombardi, whatever it is we're calling him, hats. Judge Lombardi. <laughs> he's Judge Lombardi. Whatever judge, we're calling him. Judge Rep. Lombardi. Yeah, he's had many hats. He's done a lot of good 
Uh, but when I talked to him when he first got appointed a judge a couple, over a couple of years ago, uh, he told me that one of his things that he'd like to see done would be, would, would be night court. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, they want to contest tickets, they've been unfairly ticketed. I know I've been unfairly ticketed mm -hmm. before, I know you have. Mm -hmm. So they want to contest it, but they have to work, they're always working. Yeah. So at night, at night court, they can come in and it's a convenient time. So he had said that, I never heard anyone say it before him, and as you know, I pay attention really closely to Providence. <laughs> so. Uh, he said that, and now it's a reality. So I put him on the hot list. I think it's great. I think he deserves credit for that. I also give credit to uh, Chief Judge Frank Caprio, and I give credit to the city council as well. But because I heard it first from Lombardi, I put him as the main hot. So, John yeah. Lombardi on the hot list. Absolutely. Okay, going down the list here, always like sports. Ken Bell. Yeah, Ken Bell, what a career. It's over 30 years. Uh, he's been a sportscaster, so, you know, what seems like my whole life. I've always watched him. I think he's always been professional and done a great job. And he's leaving, leaving on his own terms. He's retiring. So, uh, good guy, hot, good career. You know, I'll tell you, we put the story up. There just seems so much positive feedback. Right. He, um, you know, just seems to, you know, people when they see them, they just, as you said, grew up with him. Right. So, you know, again, great career. And then everyone would just say, oh, I met Ken. He was the nicest guy. And he, he's part of this organization. I think yeah. very involved in the community. I think just a genuine person, just. He's just one of those guys that anyone you meet that's met him never has a bad thing yes. to say about him. So I think that's a tremendous accomplishment. He's, he's on like the super hot list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're kind of like that too, you know. Everyone I meet says yeah, good things about so, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Kim Bev, what do you think that uh, who's, who's paying you these days? I, I need to find out. You know, I'm a little weary right now. Oh, I, I got to say, Russ. I'm always in trouble. Speaking of weary. Like, I come in here and I get in trouble every week. All right, keep going. Keep going. Is he saying paying people out? Right. <laughs> um, Justin Bieber. Come on, Justin Bieber. He's the biggest pop star in the world. I hope Tony doesn't kill me back there. You know, he's he's making some good music, some songs on the radio. They're catchy. And he's only the third artist in history to replace himself as number one on the charts. He did it uh, a week ago, and he did it um, last year, earlier last year. The other two artists to do it, you may have heard of them before. They're called the Beatles. And the other one is his mentor, who's Usher, who actually helped discover Bieber, you know, so many years ago. So I'm so. going through the list, and it's kind of funny, because it's usually fairly Rhode Island-centric. Yeah. Place. And then I see just I've seen Justin Bieber in concert. You, I didn't know that. With my little sister, Natalie Hernandez, we went, oh. that, thanks to Big Sisters. So you wanted to go. It was really your idea. No, no. no it was. I, I, see your line I still have pronounced hearing loss from the Justin Bieber concert. I can two, imagine. Of Screams. 2009. Yeah, wow. It's like going to a Beatles concert it, in it, it pretty much was. So, you know, yeah. good for him. I mean, these pop stars go through, you know, like Britney Spears, so many iterations of the growing pains that yeah. come out of it. So, you yeah, know, good on him. And good for you putting him on the hot list. A um, couple more things on the hot list I want to talk about. We just started talking about Don Grebian, again, being up there at the State yeah, House on Wednesday, I, going I through everything that he's been through. I don't agree with Doug Grebian on this. I don't think the plan is a good plan. He does. But I give him credit because he's a tenacious guy, and he's aggressive, and he, he's a fighter. And I have a soft spot for that. So I like that. So even though I disagree with someone, I can still say they're, they're doing a good job or they're they're fighting for what they believe in, so I put him on the hot list as so well. So say what you will about him, um, you know. And you people know, say a lot. A fight, yeah, people do say a lot. Yeah, they, a lot they, of it's bad. Yeah. You know, he's a mayor of a, of a you know, any, a any, tough city to be any mayor city of. to be mayor of. You know, you're always going to get your, your pros and cons. Your, and then there's Pawtucket. Your lovers and your haters. Right, and then um, there's Pawtucket, which but, you is know, a tough city. It's to out there, you know, could have just sort of curled up and gone back to the owners and said, hey, things aren't looking good, but goes up to the state house, makes the case for it. But what was really interesting is, you know, maybe we we'll should just shift to the not hot list right now. Mm. Getting the indications from the governor on Monday that she thought it looked like a good deal, but then finding out, and apparently the rhetoric coming from the governor's office is, you know, the fact that the state would have to backstop the Pawtucket debt. How did you not know that, you know, until so, you know, that's what you I was know, having say. conversations? I mean, it's, it's very tough to be making public pronouncements and then be like, well, I haven't seen the legislation, and then being like, oh, well, I don't like this now, the day later. That, that's the thing, Kate. That's the reason that I put Governor Raimondo on the the not hot list because she said that it looks like a good deal but I haven't seen the whole thing yet. Well hold on, you just contradicted yourself. If you haven't seen it all, then you can't say it looks like a good deal. And listen, I understand that the job of the, excuse me, the job of governor is extremely uh, difficult. I know she's under a lot of pressure and I can understand how you can misspeak at times, but it just rubbed me the wrong way to say it's a good deal. But I'm not 100% sure. It's just you know, if you're going to say it, say it. If you're going to go, go all the way. Don't None of this half-step stuff. Well, again, it was a lot of stuff done, but it seems like the 11th hour. I mean, here we are or, again, you know, late, welcome to Rhode Island. late May, you know, trying to get details out of this. you got to wonder who was having the conversations, who was briefing whom, 
Um, it just all unraveled this week. Hey, it seems it's like unraveled. Hey, it seems like these poor socks owners always do this. They come with the pro proposal right at the end because they want to rush it through. Why do they want to rush it through? Because the more we read into the details, the worse it looks. Does this remind you of something? Does this remind you of, I know we're not supposed to talk about it anymore because everyone's heard it too much. That's what 38 Studios was. So again, hearkening back to the hot list, good for Senator Ruggiero for saying we don't have enough time to study this. So. Full circle. Okay, other items on the not hot yes. list. Peter Palumbo. And yeah, more bad boys. Yeah, uh, Peter Palumbo. You know, I listen again. This isn't you know who I like, who I don't like. I actually like Representative Palumbo. I think he's a good guy, nice guy. But Just he did yep. he did get indicted for misspending his campaign account. So at that point, I kind of had to put him on the that not hot list. That just puts you on the not hot yeah, list. Yeah, indictment not good. So he uh, let's see who else is on the not hot list. Oh, this was a story that was broken by Go Local. Mm -hmm. The Crime Town T-shirt controversy. Yeah, I, I, did, I hated those t-shirts. I didn't think they were fair. I mean, you put um, you know, crime boss uh, Raymond Patriaca next to Mayor Santi, who did get in trouble with the law, but did a lot of good for the city of Providence as well. And to put their images half of one face and half the other together as if they were totally intertwined, I think was unfair. I tend to agree with the Santi with his, um, his relatives. As, as nephew, it was Brad Turquetta who called sure. it tacky and cliche. Okay, I'm with him. I, I agree with him. I, and I, I couldn't have said it better myself, so I tend to agree, so not hot, that t-shirt. I thought it was a cash grab, and well, I'll I thought it was you, unfair. I'll tell you what, we put the t-shirt up, got a lot of that feedback, also got a lot of, hey, I want to buy that t-shirt, so, sure. you know, might have been some free PR for the for Crime Town Sure, folks. and Mayor Santi was a polarizing figure, and he had a lot of enemies, but at the end of the day, I, I didn't like the t-shirt. I'm the one that said it was tacky. I'm the one who would agree that it was tacky. Now, I believe Mayor Alorza has actually said things about Crime Town, saying, you know, it glorifies that sort of crime image of Providence, that Providence is trying to shake. Now here we are, of course we have issues that we've seen, you know, some indictments this mm -hmm. past year as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the mayor's even been out in front on it. So, you know, a lot of times folks say, you know, Rhode Island's like life imitating art, imitating yeah. life. You know, it's brotherhood, with, it's that. I'm with, I'm with Mayor Lorza on this one. I agree with them. You see I the t-shirt, it's, you know, it's, it's like, okay, this is Crime Town, this is Providence, this is, is, is this all we are? And granted, it's, no. the, it's the focus of Crime and Crime Town's wildly popular, don't, don't get me wrong. I know it is. It's, it's, I'm sure it's it is. It's very popular, but yep. what, what the specifically was, was the nephew, the you know, he heads up the foundation. They just handed out scholarships this past month, and then you know to see that sort of you know it's it's just making light, I would say, of it, if you will. And so he was outspoken about it, putting the crime town tea on the not hot list. Sure, and, and I think Mayor Laws has a point. Maybe the whole crime town thing should be on the not hot list. <laughs> I think he's got a point there. I'm, I'm well, with the mayor. I mean, we're here. We take it for I don't say granted. We, you know, Rhode Islanders know about this or, or most aspects of it. But you get outside of Rhode Island, and all of a sudden, people, oh, you're from Rhode Island, crime town. Mm -hmm. and that, yep. The tent now sure. is sort of the immediate. Is that what we want as a reputation here in Rhode Island? <laughs> Let me answer that. No. So, yeah, Crime Town. Russ Moore has spoken. Not, not, not a fan. Not keen on Crime Town. No. <laughs> I'm landing on the hot not the not no. hot list this week by lieu of them, you know, shutting their doors for now. The Ocean State Theater. Yeah, it was sad. It was sad to see the promising theater company shutter its doors. Um, you know, they put on some good plays, from what I understand, but they couldn't make rent and they couldn't come to a new terms on the lease. So unfortunately, the market spoke and they're no longer around. So that's not not good. Not good for the local art scene. So I'm sorry to see that. Uh, so that's in the not hot list. Of course, I have to put Manchester. You know, just oh, awful, awful. Uh, did you see that the Queen had gone and visited the hospital over there of some of the, the, the survivors in the hospital and talked with them about it? Um, it just, you know, grabbed international attention. Had Peter Narona in the in the studio this he week. He said we can't wrap ourselves in bubble wrap, and he's right. Well, because the question is, and I know he, you know, came, as I said, from the prosecutorial side sure. of things. But this, he did a good job. You know, he, you know, kind of walked through, you know, what they what he saw when he was in the office. But... You know, happen just outside of venue. You know, what's this new world order? How? I mean, I would you know love to get someone from public safety and an FBI. And I mean, how do you even prepare for something of that magnitude? Just I think really just shook everyone as terrorism always does to the core. Clearly not hot. <laughs> sure, it's dangerous business just going out your door. Oh. Like to quote uh, Tolkien. Um, speaking of things that are dangerous, distracted driving. Sure, I read a report uh, that. Rhode Islanders are, you know, almost three times as likely to get into a fatal car accident than uh, the national average. And a large portion of that is attributed to distracted driving. People texting on their phones, eating the big ice cream cones or sandwiches, <laughs> or, you know, just not focusing on the road. And 
Uh, we see it all the time. We're not the best drivers, but we've got to get better because uh, that's not a good statistic. Don't text to drive. It can wait. <laughs> yeah, it can to wait. quote the Attorney General, it can wait. Yeah, it can wait. Um, one of the things I did pass up as we're wrapping up here, and it was on the hot side, is hmm. it's Memorial Day, so we do want to thank those Absolutely. who uh, gave their lives. Gave their, gave lives, their lives. Gave their lives. Their families. Um, uh, you know, it's it's a weekend to you know really remember them. Give thanks. Freedom is sure. not free. Yeah, it's so. kind of a solemn holiday. It's it supposed is, to be. It is I a mean, a lot of us, holiday. we're all going to celebrate it with cookouts because it's the unofficial beginning of summer, but it is supposed to be a solemn holiday, so let's keep that in mind at least But I'll a tell you, bit. they're not hot. The weather this weekend doesn't look like to be the best. But it's not going to be 95 degrees where I can't even walk outside without but breaking see, a sweat. I want 95 degrees. Yeah, so you and me are swimming. a little different. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll go see Baywatch instead. Yeah, you can go <laughs> see Baywatch. All right, up top. Boom. Good day. All right, thank you. Russ Moore, all fired up today in studio in the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center, breaking down who's hot and who's not this week in Rhode Island and Justin Bieber. I don't, you know, know where that came from, but I thought it was a fun addition. And he made a valid point, you know, argue with Russ Moore. He always backs up what he says with his own personal opinion. So this is Russ Moore writes every Friday the Hot or Not column and an opinion column on Mondays as well. So I appreciate Russ Moore's contributions to Go Local.